every industry has its limitations, and an expected point of saturation that once reached is considered the end. But semiconductor or chip manufacturing industry was once thought of as an extreme exception, with an expected twice computing power growth every 12 to 18 months. With Moore's law as a hypothesis, the chip manufacturing industry is slowing down and may be near its saturation for quite a while. Welcome to our channel, Businessville, and in this video, we're talking about why Moore's Law is failing in the gigantic world of semiconductor innovation. Make sure to subscribe to Businessville to never miss any updates on geopolitics, business, and innovation. Let's start by looking at what made Moore's Law possible in the first place. In 1965, Gordon Moore proposed a simple observation that the number of transistors on a given integrated circuit was doubling every two years. This became known as Moore's Law and predicted a steady acceleration of technological progress. In the decades since, Moore's Law has held up remarkably well, but now it is being challenged. The primary challenge to Moore's Law is physical. Transistors have become so small that they are approaching the limits of miniaturization. This means that it takes a lot of energy and time to shrink them further, and this affects their performance and efficiency. Furthermore, as transistors shrink below a certain size, they cease to function properly, making progress impossible without novel breakthroughs in physics or material science. Another limitation arises from economics. The cost of developing new chips and manufacturing them on an industrial scale can be prohibitively high for some companies, and many chip makers have begun shifting away from Moore's law and towards specialized solutions to make chips faster or more efficient. A great example of this can be seen with the ongoing global chip shortage. As advanced semiconductor chips become more complex to manufacture, the supply affects severely. Now, over 50 years later of the ideation of Moore's law, it seems that this rapid growth may be slowing down. The cause of this slowdown can be traced to several factors, including economic and physical limitations. Economically, chip producers often struggle with managing their costs while they continue to push the boundaries of possible performance gains. Physically speaking, there are certain limits to what we can do on such small scales. As features get smaller and denser, it becomes increasingly harder to get the same level of performance out of them as before. At the same time, some innovations have helped us push back against these limits and continue making advancements in chip technology and semiconductors. These include specialized fabrication techniques for making microprocessors smaller and more efficient, as well as advances in materials science that allow us to create chips with complex structures or multiple layers on them. However, even with these advancements in technology, there are still certain fundamental laws governing our ability to make these chips smaller and faster each year, and those laws cannot be defied indefinitely. Currently, there's only one company in the world that make machines that can manufacture the most advanced microconductor chips, the ASML, or Advanced Semiconductor Manufacturing Limited, is a Dutch company that manufactures and develops extreme ultraviolet, or EUV, lithography machines. This machine can make microscopic structures that are impossible to make with traditional processes. So, while Moore's law may be slowing down, and chip manufacturing may be more expensive and difficult than ever, we continue to make advances in semiconductor technology thanks to breakthroughs such as ASML's EUV lithography machines. But you can certainly get an idea of the industry when there's only one company in the entire world that can make machines to make chips with hefty price tags of upwards of $300 million. This has led many experts to speculate that we may already be reaching the limits of what Moore's law can accomplish, or at least drastically slowing down its rate of progress compared to how it once was before. This means that if we want future chip technologies to advance further, then new innovative solutions must be found outside traditional solutions and approaches like Moore's law has used in the past. So why is all this happening? By understanding what underlying forces are acting upon chip technology development, we can begin understanding why Moore's law no longer works as effectively as it once did and identify new ways forward for future progress. Many experts believe that it's the time for quantum chips to take over the traditional chips by 2035. Quantum chips have the potential to revolutionize computing and enable us to do more in less time. 
The technology is based on the idea of using quantum effects, such as entanglement and superposition, to process data much faster than conventional chips. This could drastically speed up calculations and make computer processing much more efficient. In conclusion, Moore's law may be slowing down, but chip technology continues to evolve and advance. While we may not reach the same level of progress compared to before, there are still promising new technologies, such as quantum computing, that are coming on the horizon and will shape the future of chips in years to come. With these advancements, we can continue pushing the boundaries of what is possible with chip technology and make sure Moore's law isn't forgotten. We hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know what you think will happen with the chips industry in the coming decade. Keep watching Businessville. Take care.